Hey guys, I thought I'd get my jelly plate out this week. I have some mixed media projects planned, but first I need to make some colourful papers for them, and this is a fun way to do it. So I've grabbed some acrylic paints and I'm using heavy body for this. I've got various brayers, and some of them I've actually shaped, and you can see how I did this in my 5 ways with dyes video, and I'll link that up for you. Then I have some inking palettes, and these are just repurposed pieces of plastic. I've got various stencils and mark makers. Plus, the papers that I use generally for printing and drawing on. Mono printing with the jelly plate is really convenient and easy to do, but if you don't have one, then don't worry about it. You can make your own gelatin plate, and I have a blog post to help you, so I've linked it up in the cards and in the description as well. So I'm all set up and ready to go. So as my main aim for today's session is to build up a collection of textured coloured papers. I'm just going to go for it, try some different things, build up layers and play. Using heavy body acrylic paint on a jelly plate may take a little getting used to if you don't use heavy body usually. You can use a flow regulator to add to it if you like or switch to a soft body paint. But I quite like the micro textures that you get using heavy body paint. And you see those when you lift off the paper from a particularly thick piece of paint and you get those little branched looks. I'm sure if you've seen them you'll know what I mean. Plus there's another factor why I use heavy body. I just mainly have heavy body paint. So for my first couple of prints all I'm going to do is cover the paper with some colour. And then I'll move into a little bit of mark making with some of my mark making tools. Another thing that you have to bear in mind when using acrylic paint on these types of gel plates is that they can dry really quickly. Now that doesn't tend to happen so much if you're using a gelatin plate because there's enough moisture in that gelatin plate to keep the acrylics from drying out. And if you don't want your acrylics to dry out when you're using a synthetic plate, then either use open acrylics or add some sort of drying retarder to them. But the fact that the acrylics dry is actually something you can use to your benefit. And it just needs a little bit more thinking about what kind of prints you want to get. You can see what I mean here. This paint is almost dry and I'm just putting a wet layer over the top to reinvigorate it. And when I print, now what happens is that all the paint comes off the plate and the pattern, that dry pattern, is uppermost on that print. Now if you remember back to that very first print I did around about 1 minute 50, you can roll back if you don't remember it, I printed directly onto wet paint and it left some of the paint still on the plate and just lift off the top layer of the wet paint onto the paper. So have a play and see what effects you can get and remember that if you aren't getting a print or it's a partial print and it's just not working then the paint is probably dry and all you need to do is add a layer of wet paint and take a print from that. So I'm going to build up here to do that technique again so you can see it. So the first layer that I'm putting down is kind of a pinky looking layer. Put a little bit of texture in there but I'm going to carry on building up. So for the next layer I'm going to use a stencil and I'm also going to use a very contrasting colour so you'll be able to see exactly what I mean when I do this print. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that colour around the edges and a little bit in the gaps as well. But once that's done I'm going to let that paint dry on the jelly plate. And it won't take too long to dry but still long enough for me to clean off my stencils. So I've mixed up another colour that you'll be able to see very easily when I come to do this print. And I'm going to use this to just cover that whole jelly plate over that dry paint and then I will just press the paper straight into it. So as you can see that very first layer that I put down with the kind of pink splotches and there's a little bit of hangover from the previous print I did, that's uppermost in the print. You can see a little bit of yellow coming through where there were gaps, but if you remember I didn't use that to cover the whole area. And where the stencil had lifted off the paint, that's where you can see that last wet layer coming through. It's that very light pink. So the next tip I wanted to share with you was actually just a quick reminder. And that is that you don't have to just print off of your jelly plate. So for this plate, one of the mark makers I'm going to use is an embroidery plastic canvas. And I'm just lightly pressing it into the paint on the jelly plate. And then I'll print this plate onto one of those earlier blue prints that I did. So that's another fun way of making layers, by just using previous prints and just keep layering on top with new prints. 
But if just for a moment we move the jelly plate out of the way and bring back that embroidery canvas, I think we can get a print out of that as well. So keep that in mind the next time you're doing your mono printing and, you know, try printing off your tools and your other mark makers as well. So far today I've been applying my paint mostly with a brayer and using a palette to do all my mixing but there's nothing to stop you from using other tools to add the paint to the jelly plate and here I'm using a palette knife to apply some paint to the plate and the stencil I'm using here is just an ordinary alphabet one that I've bought from a stationery shop I quite like these they're quite fun and you can find them in some places you can find them for very cheap if you get designer ones they tend to be a little bit more expensive well a lot more expensive so I'm just going to use one of my earlier prints and this is a yellow print that I did and I'll just add that pink alphabet stencil layer over the top. And of course you can always just add the paint straight to the jelly plate and not use the palette at all. And that works particularly well when you've got very fluid paints. And you can see here it's a little bit harder to mix heavy body paints with this technique but it can still give you an interesting look. So I'm going to use that alphabet print again and this will be the third layer on it. I think that mono printing and jelly printing, they're, they're quite addictive, aren't they? And you can lose several hours just doing one print after another. So what's your favourite thing about this technique? Have you used jelly plates or some of the other synthetic plates that are on the market? Or perhaps you've used a gelatin plate? I've even seen people doing mono print on mouse mats. Anyway, let me hear your views because I would love to know. So as I said, I've got some projects lined up that I'm going to use these papers for and the first one I will be sharing with you on Sunday so do subscribe if you're not a subscriber already and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss it. If the tips I'm sharing with you today have been useful to you, uh, you've enjoyed my video then please do like my video and share it with your friends, all of that is hugely appreciated and massive thank you to everyone who's been doing that. So I'm going to carry on with my printing and I will see you all again in a few days time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.